Why don't we jump right into our headline topic today? Paid mods. Starfield's DLSS 3 mod has reignited controversy over paid mods. Uh, Modder Pure Dark released a DLSS 2 slash XCSS mod for Starfield for free on Nexus Mods. But, which is really great, by the way, because the fact that the game did not support DLSS out of the box, as Luke and I observed when we did our early access uh, playtime with it, that unfortunately is not going to be a YouTube video, but will be available on Floatplane. It just... Yeah, I can talk a little bit more about that later, but it's it's not coming to YouTube ultimately. But we we definitely noticed that it would have been nice to have DLSSS. But here's the thing. In addition to the free mod on Nexus Mods, they also posted an early build of the same mod that included DLSS 3, including NVIDIA's frame generation feature that is only supported on RTX 4000 series cards. And they released this on their Patreon page, requiring a $5 monthly sub to access it. Uh, users reported that a single payment, though, so subscribing for just one month, appears to unlock the mod perpetually, uh, which, honestly, I, like, I'm, I'm okay with. Like, if you have a, a subscription, but people are allowed to have all you can eat while they have the subscription. I mean, it's basically the same way that we did all of the behind the scenes content from LTX. Yeah. You, you upgrade your subscription to enjoy the LTX content. If you still like having 4k on Floatplane, then great. You can keep it. And otherwise, well, you watched it and you can download it even like Floatplane doesn't have DRM actually, uh, but, but this mod does. Uh, users reported that the mod requires a login to authenticate that you have paid for it before it will work. Pure Dark also added the same digital rights management to their DLSS 3 mod for Red Dead Redemption 2. This is in bold. I wonder, I wonder if, hold on, I wonder if that means that it's an always online thing. No, I don't think so, because I think it's just an unlocker thing. Kind it of authenticates like, once, you get a check mark, and then you're good to yeah, go. Yeah, like WinRAR style. Hmm. Um, DRR, DRM, though, and this is in bold in our notes, is virtually unheard of for mods, but... It seems to have worked in Pure Dark's favor. By some accounts, they appear to have made over $40,000 this <sighs> month, which is, last time I checked, a flipping lot of money. Yeah. Which goes to show you how much gamers value having access to these features and how baffling it is that Bethesda... I, there, there's been some some kind Whoever of it was, tinfoil yeah. hat conspiracy theory yeah. stuff that AMD might have put pressure on Bethesda to not have it, but then AMD said they were... Super chill with it having DLSS, but then... But then Bethesda's basically, like, refused it, to comment on it, really. It didn't have it, and now a single modder in, like, seven, eight, eight days... I'm pretty sure this was out before the game was out. Well, no, that, no, I'm doing the math from early access. Oh, okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in eight or nine days or whatever it works out to has managed to hack it into the game. I mean, I, I, Obviously, QC takes time. In some cases, QC can take more time than the actual development, but it's pretty clear to me that this is something that if they'd had the will, they could have done it. I do wonder if it's not contractual, but if it's just kind of like, uh, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, a little, yeah. A little under the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, right? Like, hey, so, be... so I just checked the original mod, the free mod on Nexus Mods was uploaded on September 1st. Wow. <laughs> now, unsurprisingly, you gotta gotta love modders and game crackers and hackers and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, the mods DRM was cracked and pirated in a matter of days, and a free <laughs> alternative was uploaded to Nexus Mods by Luke FZ, relation of yours. Not not my alias. Um, which ignited a debate over Pure Dark's approach. But why? This is cool. So we had um, we had the news team reach out to a developer who explained that there are essentially two main ways in which the mod community views itself, uh, coined by legendary Morrowind modder Rai. The cathedral view and the parlor view are sort of diametrically opposed, um, yeah. sort of incompatible with each other in a sense. The cathedral view sees modders participating in a joint effort to build something amazing. So to those folks, the idea of locking a single stained glass window behind a paywall seems ridiculous and counterproductive. I would, I haven't, I haven't asked them if they see themselves this way, but I would look at like the Sky Bolivian project in that light. 
It's a huge team of modders. Enormous undertaking. Collaboratively working on something for years to make so this cool. incredible project. Look into it. It's actually stunning. Basically, yeah. they take the whole Oblivion game and just... Into the Skyrim engine. But then with, like, amazing assets to it and everything. Like, it's... it's, it's I'm going to be so stoked when that comes out. Anyways. Like, it is not just Oblivion, but prettier. It is basically rebuilt. Yeah. So cool. And it's it looks a lot better than, like, Skyrim did at launch. It looks like heavily modded, like, beautiful perfection Skyrim, but it's Oblivion. Like, it's 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 incredible. It's, it's fantastic. On the other side of things, the parlor view sees individual mods as art pieces that are displayed in the modder's parlor, and the modder can choose to close the parlor doors anytime they choose. In addition to modders of the Cathedral School here, much of the backlash to the mod's paywall plus DRM seems to be coming from young gamers with little or no disposable income. Um, Riley's note here is who seemingly possess RTX 40 series cards and a $70 game. See, I actually am very strongly in Riley's camp here. I think that a lot of the outrage over $5 um, items is probably manufactured as opposed to, or I think people have at least a, a feeling of being principled on it. Like, I don't think it's about the money is I guess what I'm trying to say. Yeah. The debate over paid mods is nothing new. In 2015, Steam added, then removed, paid mod functionality from the Steam Workshop. In 2017, Bethesda launched the Creation Club, um, a service hosting user-generated content that Bethesda explicitly described as not paid mods, since existing mods were not allowed, only new content that was developed with Bethesda's approval was allowed. Uh, but many other user-generated content marketplaces do exist, like Minecraft Marketplace, or, I mean, the entire game of Roblox. <laughs> that's the point of road Roblox. So I guess at risk of us angering 50% of the internet, no matter which stance we take here. Yeah. What's your, what's your take on this? I don't know. I think it's complicated. I, um, well, yeah, it's definitely I, complicated. I, Thank you for that. I very much, uh, professor, uh, professor, obvious. I, I like, Lafreniere. I like the approach that a group like sky oblivion takes. Sure. But can you demand that? I don't think so. I think if someone wants to do a whole bunch of work and they want to get paid for their work, it is their right to put their work up for sale, effectively. But I, I, I just, yeah, I don't know. Why do I even read Twitch chat? Linus, you're disregarding the precedent this might set. I haven't yeah, taken a it, stance! It could, well, it could, that's, that's, I think, one of my biggest concerns. Sure. Is it could really change the community very heavily. Now tell me this. Hmm. Let's take a big picture sort of 10 year outlook approach here. Mm. Do you think that in the grand scheme of things, it will ultimately be a net benefit to the modding community in terms of, and I don't mean a net benefit in terms of money, because obviously if they make money, that is a net benefit. I mean, in terms of the quality and the diversity of the mods that gamers get to enjoy. Do you think it will be a net benefit? I honestly to modding? think it would be a negative. Okay, but I haven't even finished asking the question. I know okay. that you and I mind meld, but I do need to ask the question <laughs> okay. for their benefit. Right. Okay, is it a net benefit to have this source of income going into the modding mm. community in general that either doesn't exist or exists only in certain marketplaces like Roblox, for example, where it's very prevalent? Or is it a net negative outcome that... And I'm now that he's taken some of the wind out of my sails, I'm going to take some of the wind out of his that could actually hurt the the passionate roots of modding in general in, in the first place um, and take some of the some of the just because I can spirit out of it and potentially hurt modding. Yeah, so the, yeah, that's everything I was going to say. Uh, Got him. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's it's like. If someone wants to work on something, they completely deserve the, the right to be able to sell it. But I do think that some other things come into question at that point. Because if you are doing this for profit, here's going to be a hyper-controversial take that people are not going to like. Why shouldn't Bethesda get some of that money? Ooh. See, Especially you know what? When the okay, look at my screen. Look at my, what I put in Notepad. <laughs> I specifically, I wrote down, deserve to sell it, because he did say that. 
they are relying on somebody else's IP, someone else's blood, blood, sweat, and beers. <laughs> I, I don't know. Someone else's blood, sweat, and beers tears in there somewhere. to provide a platform for them to sell their service. If well, I Not were, only that, but I, I, what isn't out right now, but will be coming is the creation kit, which is a series of modding tools. If you look at something like game engines, if you make a game using a game engine that is free, they will then take money from the sales of your game. Yes. This is a very normal thing. So if people are going to stand and, and say that they want to sell mods, which again, if they want to, I think they should be able to, if they're going to use tools like the creation kit or, or potentially even if they're just going to mod the game at all, it, does it make sense at that point for the company that released the game to make some of the money from it? I think maybe. And I think one of the beautiful parts of the modding community, and something that I've really enjoyed about it, and before people jump on me, I am a Nexus Mods subscriber, and I have donated to multiple modding projects, because I have thought it's decently important in the past, because I am gaining a massive amount of enjoyment from these mods. I, there's games that I will play with mods on them that I would not play without it. So, like, at that point in time... Okay. Now, that's where we get into a really interesting counterpoint here, because... You just said modders should be giving Bethesda a cut of their revenues. But then you also just said, there's games that I wouldn't play. And I think for a lot of gamers, never mind wouldn't play, wouldn't buy in the first place if it wasn't for the rich, vibrant modding communities that are around them. So yeah, it's interesting. who should be paying who? Or is this just a purely symbiotic relationship where both parties should tolerate or even respect each other and try to cooperate. But then, so, if someone in bad faith creates a mod that damages the brand of the company that created the original which game... Which has happened. Which has happened, I mean, rule a 34. Number of times. Well, no, with, with Bethesda, actually, with, I think it was Oblivion, uh, modders found that you could take the, the underwear... Is this going to be it? Right. You oh. could take the underwear model, uh, you could take the underwear texture off of the character models, and when you did that, there was graphical things under them, um, and they were like, whoa, what the heck, this is already in the game, and then that reached out to, I believe, ESRB, and they wanted to change the rating on the game, and like all these things happened. Yeah. Um, so this has happened to literally Bethesda. Um, and, okay, so I'm, I'm seeing some people in chat being like, no, uh, Jade naturally brings up a really good point, I think. You don't have to pay a car manufacturer if you mod your car. Um, I, I think my point here would be the, the tools that are being released by these companies in order to allow people to mod it. Uh, I, I think most, most games, a lot of games have modding happen to them that don't try to make that happen, if you know what I mean. Whereas I think if uh, if your car manu if a car manufacturer were to provide a tuning shop with resources that enable them to tune the cars better, I think that that's something that they could reasonably charge for. I, I think it would be, yeah, I guess what I would say is I don't think this should be like a requirement, but I think at that point that would also, that should also be seen as a reasonable approach. And another game could take an approach of going, look, we're going to provide these modding tools and not charge for them to try to be the more hyper mod friendly game. But I think the anger that w would traditionally go towards uh, a game developer for trying to skim some mod money, if we're also cool with modders charging for it, I think both of those things should probably be okay. Right. But if the mods are free traditionally, and then the game company is like, hey, we're going to skim some money and you have to pay for these now, that's a little weird. And then same they're imposing versa, their will, yeah, right? Yeah. I th I, that's where I think I'm at. I'm now, not really sure. Now, back to, back to that point that was, uh, you know, basically think about the precedent this sets. Let's, let's talk about that for a little bit. If you run a modded game, maybe this deserves a pull. I think this deserves a pull. Sure. Uh, do, do you want to set up the pull? Yeah. Okay. If you run a modded game, I would... I, I would posit, I would, I would guess, um, that you probably don't run one mod. So let's, let's, um, let's, let's. I'm only really speaking to the people who like to mod games here. So if you don't mod any games and the answer is zero, you don't need to participate in the poll. Uh, let's say one to two, three to five, um, six to ten, or ten or eleven plus, or something like that. You know, how many mods would you expect to be running on a game that you like to play? Because there's everything. 
everything from texture packs to you know face replacements to you know uh, sound effect repl- like basically the sky is the limit when it comes to modding uh new gameplay modes uh different difficulties you can add new spells so sorry, like, there's all kinds wh- wh- what of what things is the question how, how many-, many mods would you typically apply to a game Ooh, so this I'm asking, is going to range an incredible amount depending on what game they play. So is this, I just is this how people. many mods you actually do typically run? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. 1 to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 plus. Uh, 1 to 2, 11 plus, okay. Well, yeah, because honestly, I mean, five, for Beat Saber, I will easily six, be running 10. over 10 mods at a given time. And I don't always because there's... Oh no, I think I think you're not understanding my my laughter is there's people that are gonna be at like nine hundred. Yeah, I believe you. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I just I just wanna get a rough idea because I'm I'm coming to something with this. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll I'll be I'll be making a point with this at some point. Uh, is the is a poll up? Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the results here. So this is exactly what I was expecting. We've got handfuls of people around 10 to 15 percent each that are saying you know one to two three to five six Guys, to ten hold on sorry 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 yeah there's a bunch of comments right now <laughs> that i think are uh, um right now we're talking about games that you mod we're not, not talking about not games, you, games don't mod. you play yes yes yeah. it's okay 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 but over half are saying 11 plus. Yeah. And here's the point that I'm coming to, and here's where I think the slippery slope argument starts to gain some momentum for me. Mm-hmm. This is what? A $70 game? $80 game? Right? Like, depending on your currency, right? It's, it's going to be somewhere between $50 to $120. Yeah, I think it's 79 ish. up in Canada or something. Yeah, something like that. Like that. By the time you pay $5, which was the price of this particular mod, for 10 mods, you are dang close to doubling the cost of the game. What if you're running 900? (laughs) What if you're running 900 mods? Now you're playing uh, Train Simulator. Now, (laughs) unless you're basically like a mobile gaming microtransaction whale... You don't get to play the game that you want to play. Also, if the DRM... Um, if the DRM scheme is such that you have to pay for the mod before you can even try it, I think what's going to happen is you're going to see a lot less momentum for these modding communities, for these modders, because people aren't just going to, you know, throw it on and see what happens and see if it's any good, because the only way for them to monetize that model would be always online. They would have to check if you're running it so that you could, you know, have a one hour free demo of a of a, a texture upgrade mod or something like that. Yeah. Now, I'm not and, opposed to that money getting spread around. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like compared to the compared to the, 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 the predatory whale model that mobile gaming uses where all the money is going to the developers. I, I, I don't mind the passionate, enthusiastic individuals or small groups in the community making some money that's not a problem to me but i am not a huge fan of a single player game going from you know 60 80 dollars to i don't know 400 bucks by the time you have all the quality of life by the time you have enough freaking slots in your in your in your in your belt so that you can actually like <laughs> gobble down enough potions and food to survive some stupid boss fight or something, right? Like, that's the kind of crap that, yeah, probably should be solvable without having to pay a ton of money. At least in my, like, you know, monkey, caveman, early gamer brain. But then somebody did that work, so why aren't they compensated? Like, I can't... Is this one of those rare times that I'm just like, no, I actually cannot take a stance on this. I just want to talk through all the different perspectives and then fold my hands like this and go, well... Maybe. Yeah, I like th- this is effectively what you're talking about right yeah. now is why my first initial thing was like, yeah, it's going to completely change the whole landscape if it goes this way. Because you look at some of the games that are most well known um Oh yeah. Uh Avon Fox in full plane chat said people copying other people's mods a thousand times over and renaming them to sell will also be rife. Yeah, it's it's interesting because like if you're selling something um you probably should also be able to handle customer support and refunds and uh what if there's compatibility issues with other people's mods um how do you deal with 
who has to deal with that problem yeah um and the like drama and issues that that's going to cause um there's lots of issues i just basically my i i uh, i don't know yeah there's a big difference between the level of polish that something needs to kind of huck it out there for free versus be a product versus be a product like i think a perfect and that is, to be clear there are plenty of free mods that are absolutely astonishingly good and deserve to effectively equate to product. this is a perfect example of that kind of thing <laughs> merch messages is a super cool product and really really useful for us what do we say in here <laughs> no we're saying what we're saying is you and i have talked about this uh. we're saying that if we were to roll this out for other creators oh yeah the amount of documentation the the amount of uh, like polish the amount of um mostly documentation really like just Re retooling in a bunch of different ways yeah like, the amount of work that it would take to get it just and then we would basically need people plug and play on ready call, like all the time yeah the support because what if there's an issue and and so you you know you look at a product like this and you go wow holy smokes any creator with a shopify store could be could be benefiting from merch messages that the same way that true. we are yeah. their communities could be benefiting from instead of throwing money at the screen ordering products that support the creator the creator is probably getting a very similar cut assuming their platform takes you know 50 to 30 percent or whatever it is and you actually get a product in the mail like it's it's just better um yeah. and so and this, it's, this isn't to say we will never do that no there's no, just it, reasons why we haven't done it yet but there's been a there's Good been ones. a lot of work that's gone into it to get it to the point that it is and to get it that like eight percent more I don't double triple the amount of work like I I don't even know how to quantify that <laughs> Conrad MMAAS merch messages as a service um, <laughs> um, I honestly Conrad works on merch messages Conrad us. would know better than me but it's a it's a very very significant amount more work especially to yeah. make it scalable like there's uh, yeah we're because we're not just making another version for someone we're making a version that can be used by X amount of people, not one more person. So that in itself is like a huge issue. Here's a question you might know the answer to. How much more work was Flowplane to make oh, it so that other creatures... God, yeah. Astronomical. Um, it was like, honestly, not really that bad to make it just for us. Um, like near the end of the forum version, it was pretty good. Like, it was fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then we tried to scale. Yeah, Forged Alliance Forever is talking about this. Uh, the default Supreme Commander community is virtually dead. The vast majority of Supreme Commander sales, however small that may be, are for using a modded client. And my understanding is that they are not allowed to directly monetize. Like, they're not allowed to profit from it. I think it's a not-for-profit don't quote me on that. Not sure. I no. don't have a I don't have a ton of detail about that, but they definitely do run it as a very donation only kind of deal. Uh, so maybe someone who knows a bit more can post in the float plane chat or whatever else. I don't know. I think this is extremely complicated, and at the end of the day, it's going to come down to the community, not the collective, to decide. It's going to come down to the individual members of the community, because that's the thing. We talk about the community as, as this singular entity a lot, but that's simply not the case. And so while if, even if, let's say, hypothetical numbers, let's say 99% of the community opposed modding or opposed paid mods, and especially DRM mods, how many copies of Starfield have they sold so far? Do we know that? Have I, they announced I, anything? I know they had over a million uh, players at one time or whatever. Yeah, over a million players were playing the premium edition on both Steam and Xbox, putting premium edition the sales premium edition. well above 2 million copies. Okay, so what's the cost? Okay, you know what? It, that doesn't matter. The point is, uh, the, the, amount, the, the revenue doesn't matter in this for, for what I'm trying to explain right now or what I'm trying to demonstrate right now. What I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that at 2 million copies of this game, and it's a lot more than that, 10% of that would be 200,000, right? And 1% of that would be 20,000. 20,000 people, if only 1% of people are okay with it, 
That's a hundred grand that a modder could make selling their mod for five bucks. So even if the community hates paid mods, the vast majority are, are just unanimous about this. Well, that's I not unanimous that enough. Interesting. Sorry? Sorry, you're saying... If, if only 1% is okay and buys the mod, that's 100 grand oh, in revenue but the, I for think, that mod. I think it would end up being the oof, 1% conversion rate is yes, like... Yes, I know. Okay. Yeah. 1% right. is optimistic for basically Hyper. just at all. Maybe, maybe it would be more like 1% of that 1% that is okay with it, which would still be $1,000. Which is... Which is still money. It's a lot more than zero. Yeah, and, and I think that if you have a mod that has mainstream enough appeal, you might be able to convert it greater than 1%. Um, that and, I think we know from the DLSS 3 mod sales that that conversion rate is probably pretty good. The number of gamers that are willing to accept paid mods seems to be higher than 1%. 6 million. Okay, there you go. Biggest Bethesda game launch of all time. Yeah, and it's so... it's not on PlayStation. So 6... six so that would be 6,000 now. Even if you are only... Even if you only convert 1% of your 1% of total possible customers. That is an enormous pool to tap into, even if it's a tiny fraction of the total gamers that play Starfield. So I think the community is just going to decide. And I think that if we're being honest, we know what the answer is. Some people are going to be doing paid mods now. Paid mods are here to stay. I, I, if I have to make a prediction, what I would say is it's just going to split into two camps. Okay. Um, I think there's going to be a paid modding camp. And I think there's going to be a free modding camp. Because I think there's a very significant community of people who... Uh, learn digital art or digital audio or development or whatever else through modding games and they're still going to have a lot of fun with it. I think a lot of people still view these things as passion projects um, or will be creating a mod that they don't necessarily think they could sell. Maybe it's too minor. Maybe it's one of those things that's going to end up in the list of 900 mods, whatever. Uh, but I do think you'll get... Um, some major mods that will cost money. Now, shit's about to get real, Luke. Mm. You saw NVIDIA's tech demo where they added um, ray traced lighting to Morrowind with a bunch of like yes. replaced assets and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. I mean, on would a scale, hold, that? That, hold on, hold on, just stop it. <laughs> You're doing the thing again. <laughs> We're even now. <laughs> okay. okay, let me set this up. Okay, okay, okay. If. <laughs> It looked pretty cool, right? Mm. Out of 10, how cool would you say that that, that looked? To me, like 10. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm, I'm a hyper Morrowind mod. Big Morrowind or, guy. Uh, fan, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. That mod comes out. It looks just like that. The whole flipping game looks like that. It costs $50. Do you buy... Yeah, he's already nodding. <laughs> so that's the thing, right? Is that... It's not only just your principled stance on it. It's also how bad do you want it? Well, no, I don't think that's it. Because my principled stance isn't that someone doing work to develop something that's super cool should be not paid for but it. But this is not donation. That's not my stance. This is... No, I understand. Okay, what if... Here, okay, let's, let's, let's sicken the deal. The mod has Denuvo. Oof. Okay, I might actually not do it then. It has Denuvo. It's twenty bucks. I am particularly just, against. I just want to. I just want to. I just want to. I just want to. You know, it's twenty bucks. It looks like that. It runs great. It's twenty bucks. It has Denuvo. I don't. I look am, at him. I'm, look at him. He's thinking well, about I it. I am thinking because there are games yeah. that looked really cool that I have specifically not purchased because I hate Denuvo. Were they Morrowind? No. <laughs> 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 this is not a very fair example, jerk. Oh, I know, um, I know, but that's the thing, No, right? I know, I get it. That's get the it, point I'm trying to make is gamers are passionate. And sometimes the passion of gamers separates their money from their wallets at times when they know, like, cognitively, logically, that they shouldn't I be think, doing it. I think we know we shouldn't pre-order. And yet, two million concurrents, we're playing Starfield with the premium pre-order edition. Yeah. I think I think Denuvo would be a no for me. Um, so <laughs> I'd wait till I can crack Denuvo out. Um, I've, I'm not gonna say I've I've never done that. Um, <laughs> 
so maybe maybe there's a, what I'll call an alternative route. Um, but yeah, but it's I don't a di- know. the point I was trying to make was just that this is not as cut and dried as yes, always this way, N- no, never that way. It, it, everyone's going to have their own. Like okay, I kind of hate the way Nintendo behaves as a company. Yeah. But you still own a Switch and you still buy the new games. I keep giving them money. Yeah. Um, because I, 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 I love video games. Like, I'm sorry. So, uh, the, the... They make fun video games. They also make, like, really stupid bad ones. But they make really fun ones, too. The Dan Vale said, gamers are not passionate. We're stupid. It's like, okay, th- those aren't mutually exclusive. Yeah, they could be. Why not we both? Can, we can be both. Yeah. We, we can, are both. Okay? We can be stupidly passionate. Yeah. We can be passionately stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Why don't we jump into our next topic? Uh, but yeah, I Before don't know. we manage I to insult I think it's everyone. <laughs> I think pretty much everyone's mad. But yeah. I think this is just... I think that's I think that's less to do with what we said because I don't think either of us ever really took a firm stance on any of this, and more to do with people that, are mad about my. Uh, I think the companies should be able to take some of the cut if they release mod tools thing. Oh really? Some people are mad about that, but I think okay. So here's here's my point there. But it's what the market will bear. Yeah. It's whether modders choose to mod for that game, knowing that that's the deal. I, if they change the deal, I strongly oppose that. If it starts out as these tools were free and, oh, a lot of people are using this. This has added a lot of value to our game. Mm, oh, uh, new rules, new rules. Yeah. That's what, not cool. What if, what if the modders using those tools start charging, though? Start Because oh. the scenario that I was talking about was yeah. um, mods made through, let's, let's say Creation Kit comes out, because it's not out for, for Starfield yet, so this applies to none of the mods that are out currently. It's free, and everyone releases mods for free, but then all of a sudden, modders start charging, and Bethesda's sitting there going, excuse me, pardon? And I, I don't know. I think, I think Jaden's point about the um, modding cars thing is pretty valid, but yeah. then I think the, the counterpoint is that Bethesda put work into making the creation kit specifically. They did. Four mods. Knowing that they're going to sell a lot more copies of their game yes. with the longevity that the value that modders create is going to add to it. So this is why I, I don't think, I think another way that I think this might be getting misconstrued is I'm not saying that they should. What I'm more saying is that they, they, they're within their rights. They could, and I would understand why. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it would often, for, for something like uh, Skyfield, I think it would be a deeply unintelligent move starfield but yes yeah sorry what did i say skyfield, skyfield is really close sick yeah m- like a- moro moro field more <laughs> more mor- 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 oblivion <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i think it would be stupid because uh, honestly in the state that they release the games <laughs> like for a pc it like needs mods the, the the you'd like need ui mods you need all this other stuff um and i think the reason why skyrim had the legs on it that it did was the modding community so i think if they if they screw up and they're like no we're you you like can't release free mods and we're taking a cut of all the paid mods something like that i think that would be just an incredibly stupid move there's also degrees of taking a cut if Bethesda came out and said, look, um, you know, we're, we've got this marketplace and we've got to cover transaction fees and make it like worthwhile to maintain this darn thing. We need like 10 to 15 percent or something like that. I don't think that's entirely unreasonable. Whereas if they come in and they say, yeah, it's 50 50. Oh, that's a lot. Then yeah. that's a lot. Right. Yeah. So and, and there's games like I think it's it doesn't Roblox take like 90 percent or some <laughs> insanity. Yeah. Like so it's, there, it's, uh, it's always it's always shades of gray. Um, what would you think about a slider system? Oh, like Humble Bundle? Yeah. Uh, I think This that, percentage goes to the... And you can go to zero. Yeah. This I, percentage of the payment goes towards Creation Kit. This percentage of the payment I goes towards the modder. I think if you have modder. that, you might as well just put 100% towards the modder, the modder. because even the most ardent ga- fans of Bethesda games hate Bethesda. <laughs> so... So they're all just going to zero you out? <laughs> yeah. I, I really think that that is not even a... A possibility people going you know what a hundred percent to bethesda let's go how many people do you think would skip changing the sliders though like if they put it like 80 20 20 percent goes to creation kit 80 percent goes to the, depends, the mod creator it depends on how many dark patterns are involved mm. in the creation of this slider because humble bundle 
for example, at least the last time I bought one, was like very front and center. Hey, this is a slider. This is what it does. You must interact with this button before you can proceed and buy this bundle of games. Uh, it, so it's really going to depend on how how skeezy they are about the positioning of the slider. And I think, that, I think that's something they could influence a lot. Uh, another thing that I would say is... We're um, never going to move on from this topic. I sorry, tried. I, I tried, have, I have one last bit. Another thing that I would say is that if you're if you're mad about my... Like, I, I think it could make sense for developers to take out if they make the modding tools. Uh, there's this stuff that's already out there. And if you're not mad, now's probably the time. If this is something that you want to stop. Skyfall? Yep. Really? You pay for it. Wow. Minecraft Marketplace. There it's interesting, go. too, because I, I noticed this, but Rare Loot, who I guess made Skyblock, I haven't heard of these other ones, but Skyblock, um, has three out of four on the What's Popular. Wow. I don't know what the splits are here. I know nothing about this at all. Man. It might only work with one type of Minecraft, because I know there's a bunch of different types of Minecraft. I'm not a Minecraft person. I don't know. The way the pricing is done should be illegal. How it's obfuscated by coins? Yeah. Yeah, it's stupid. I hate it. The fact that this is marketed at kids and the fact that the pricing is hidden is um, extremely problematic. Yeah. And Conrad's saying, to be fair, Marketplace has some pretty great stuff. Yeah. And uh, there's already amazing mods for um, Starfield. And there's a mind-blowing, incredible whole game quality mods for Skyrim yeah. um, and like Sky Oblivion's coming out. There's there's amazing things. Uh, I'm and catching up bits 2435 in the float plane chat. That's his whole point. He goes, are they just now complaining about this after years? No, no, that's his whole point is that if you're mad about this now, you kind of missed the boat a we, little we've bit. We've missed like, the boat a bit. You, and you, if you need you to go back and be mad about it's, it's kind of like if you're mad about microtransactions in mobile gaming. You need to go back in time and be mad about horse armor. And some people were. And some people, because I was. Because people were mad about horse I armor. Didn't buy it. People were also mad about how Roblox has been around at all. Yep. Um, but I, I, I think like if, if this is something that the community wants to stand up against, um, you got to do it loud and now. Um, yeah. Yeah, it feels like we've... Honestly, it seems to me... Like we may have already reached a point of no return here. Like I don't with think that with that person who made the DLSS mod making forty grand in a month, a I lot guarantee of, you, it's a it's a gold rush essentially at that point. As soon as one person makes a year's worth of income in a month, whoa! You're gonna have other. You're gonna have people looking. There's gonna be parents whose kids have fun modding games that are now pushing them to try to make it oh, a yeah. career instead of a passion, uh, which is straight up going to make a bunch of things worse in a bunch of different ways. Why like, do I read Twitch chat? Yeah. Beating that horse armor to death at this point. But that's the point. It's, it's the same company that we're centering this entire conversation around. And that was the start of microtransactions in gaming. That was that, yeah. was that turning point when we had an opportunity to buy microtransaction crap after the fact or not buy it and enough of the community back to my point about you know whether it's one percent or more enough of the community was willing to do that that bethesda made enough money that other gaming companies stood up and took notice and went this is the future of monetization in gaming yeah. and that's what got us where we are today and there was probably stuff that went on behind the scenes and there were things that other companies were working on at the same time. It was just that it that was, was one of the one. highest profile, yeah. most obviously successful in spite of how mad everybody was moments for microtransactions. And yeah, we keep talking about that one. Why? Because that was the one. So we could talk about other ones, but then we'd be wrong. Um, all right. Why don't we jump into... Oh, shoot. No, there was a thing that I had wanted to... Ah, it doesn't matter. What do you want to jump into next? Nintendo demos the Switch 2? Sure. We can or that. whatever it is. Um, according to multiple sources, Nintendo held a closed-door demonstration of the successor to the Switch for developers at Gamescom last month. The demonstration used to target specs of the new console to run both. The demonstration used... Oh, the demo 
used oh, the God. target Sorry. specs of the console. I just got a like, oh no moment. What? $40,000 for a graphical feature that yeah. could be a microtransaction from the company itself. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. I yeah. didn't think about that till right now. Yeah. That was that was sort of oh sorry. I that was what I was getting at with like doubling the cost of the game and like three hundred dollars for the game and stuff like no, that. No, 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 no. I know, I know. It, and the company could could ship it without DLSS three and be like, yeah, it's another five bucks. Or without ultra textures. I mean it's it's basically just a first party texture mod. Yeah, do you want oh my god, yeah. Yeah, do I know. Do you want the low tier version of this game? I know. Th this is a cool game that has six different endings or you can get up to 12 different endings for another 10 bucks. That's already sort of a thing, yeah. I I the the thing that's blowing my mind I guess is the settings behind a microtransaction because there's there's already been content for sure, but I don't I don't think I've seen settings. I mean, okay. is, is a texture pack not a setting? It's kind of content. It's kind of a setting. <sighs> Which one is it? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, <sighs> it's riding the line. Yeah, yeah. It's it like, right there. It like could be sort it's of... It's right there. It could fall on this side. It could fall on this side. <laughs> I don't know which side it's going to fall on. I hate it. Okay, switch to run away. We got to talk about this thing. Sorry, go. Ugh. <sighs> <clears throat> okay, all right. Occasionally, it's okay to look at Twitch chat. Dark Matter Synthesis. Yes, I was mad over horse armor. The problem is we already know gamers don't have any willpower to say no. We are f***ed. Yep, yep, that's 100% true. I'm sorry, it's the new version of AI topics. I'm going to bring us back to that Bethesda topic for a second. No, you're not. Um, you're going to explain and do two merch messages. Oh, okay, I'll save it. I'll save it. I'll save it. Um, I'm going to lose the... <laughs> okay, fine, just do it. Let's talk about it. We're okay. going back to the Bethesda okay. topic. Let's go. It has been brought to my attention uh, by James Ryan and with some, with some help, Handyman and some other people in the Floatplane chat, that there's some interesting things in the Starfield EULA. Uh, one line... Uh, specifically, I'm going to do section 3.E. Uh, these are limitations and restrictions. Exploit the game or any of its parts, including, with limitation, the game client for any commercial purpose. Oh. Including, without limitation, renting, leasing, or licensing the game to others. Including, without limitation, A, for gathering virtual currency? Uh, okay, items well, or resources for sale then... outside the game or for performing in-game services in exchange for payment outside of the game. In that case, it says EG power leveling, which I think comes from uh, their online services. There's, there's some really weird sections of this EULA that people have pointed out to me before. So these things they... are all forbidden. Those things stated, which... I, what? Why is there pizza here? Oh, okay. Um, I, I, I don't know. The gathering of virtual currency. Well, it's gold farming. Is, yeah, it's not the, like this. This sounds like part that they took from the Elder Scrolls Online. And oh. I don't think actually pertains to this particular mod, in my opinion. Got it. Okay. Um, but there are really, really weird sections um, like this one that is talking about specific. It, it specifically names power leveling which is a thing that happens in, like, MMOs. Um, uh, there, there's other sections where it talks about how you can't use mods that would negatively impact other people's gameplay. Mm -hmm. And it's like... Yeah, that doesn't make any this sense. This is a, a single-player single game. game. So there's, there's a For ton now, of stuff in the EULA that talks about multiplayer-specific things. Right. Okay. So I wonder if there's, like, a DLC or something or an expansion coming in the future that allows you to have companions on your ship that are your buddies because why else would they have these limitations in the eula well, that's basically just star Citizen. it pertains to fallout 76 that functionality it's would, from fallout 76 okay that functionality would take 10 years to build obviously <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's generous <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah okay so they so they pulled it from fallout 76 sure but either way it came from a game that is not a single player game um gabriel r says sorry to keep beating on this but it seems like an important question. Do you think it makes a difference if we complain at the start of a trend, like with horse armor? It seems to me that companies will push it until they can, no matter what, and it will only stop happening after it becomes so bad people grab their pitchforks and go for the throat. That's exactly the point, though, is if you grab the pitchforks and go for the throat right at the beginning when you see this behavior that 
on a small scale might not be a big deal, but on a large scale is going to completely change the face of gaming, then that will be the point where the pitchforks come out and you go for the throat and they kind of go, oh, you know, maybe we shouldn't do this. Or maybe they just will do it anyway because that small percentage of people will continue to buy it. Uh, gonna keep doing it, but I think this one's pretty big. Uh, James Ryan, again, uh, sent me a link to the uh, creation kit for Skyrim. And the like, one of the very first sections. Like, I'll, I'll share my yeah, yeah. I'll share my screen. This is the top of it. The first actual s section is restrictions on use. The editor is and shall remain. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I'm gonna do that still. Maybe, maybe even more. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now you don't even have to read it. They could just read it. Yeah. <laughs> the editor is and shall remain the copyrighted property of Bethesda Softworks and or its designees. And you shall take no action inconsistent with such title or ownership, except as set forth in section five below, you may not cause or permit the sale or any other commercial distribution or commercial exploitation, uh, yada, 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 whether on a uh, pay per play basis or otherwise of any new materials without the express prior written consent uh, of an wow. authorized representative of Bethesda Softworks. That's pretty clear. This DLSS thing was not made using Creation Kit. There is no Creation Kit right. for Starfield yet. So I don't think that applies to this situation. But it's very clear that Bethesda maintains the legal right to control anything that happens with Creation Kit. With Creation Kit specifically. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which, again, I, th I think maybe I worded it poorly or something earlier, but people were like, whoa, 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 whoa. These things weren't made with Creation Kit. I understand that. It's not out yet. Every single um, Starfield mod currently out was not made with Creation Kit because Creation Kit is not out. Um, and we don't even have a release date for Creation Kit. So, like... It might not even be soon. 